Necromancy. Isn't it amazing when someone else literally bones your enemies for you? Now in my AFK ghost vid, I was talking about how admin souls are like the best souls you can get, but I was terribly, terribly wrong. In this video, I will show you a new and improved method to spawn souls, a huge achievement for necromancy overall, and how you could use these strong souls to AFK void glues. Necromancy is not a well-known part of Skyblock, so to know why this is such a big achievement, I will explain what necromancy is. The items that are used are a summoning ring from floor 6, the necromancer sword also from floor 6 and the reaper side from zombie slayer. Those last two are weapons so you can put ultimate wise 5 on them. If you have a summoning ring, all mobs can drop souls and with the sword and sight you have to kill them with it. Now if you have a necromancer weapon with a soul on it, if you right click then you can spawn the mob and the mana cost depends on the HP and damage. So mobs with low HP and damage will cost almost no mana, but the strongest mobs will cost so much mana that they would be theoretically impossible to spawn. This is where Bayo Cypher comes in. He has created a new and improved version to get to insane amounts of intelligence and spawn super strong souls. So he starts off by spawning some bats, then getting an enderman to attack him, and now he is trying to do a sword swap. There we go, he just spawned a tribe member? What? This has 1 billion HP, wait, wait a minute, how is this even possible? Tribe members are new mobs that were introduced in the Crystal Hollows update. They are level 100, have 1 billion HP, and they can insta kill players. Now, for some amount of time, you could actually kill them, get their souls and put them on a sight or sword, but as of now, their souls are unobtainable. They have 1 billion health and 800,000 base damage, but they can also crit. Now let's take a look at the gear being used. Full mythic necrotic final destination armor with wisdom 5, big brain and smarty pants. This armor set gives the most amount of intelligence thanks to the intelligence multiplication by 1.2 from the full set bonus. A heroic Hyperion for mana swapping and of course ultimate wise 5 on the side with the soul. He starts off by spamming bats, but why? For the bat person artifact, every bat that you spawn will give you 10 intelligence granting you an additional 200 to 300 intelligence. He immediately turns around so they fly back to him, upping their despawn time. Now what else can you see? Imagine that this nice protector dragon armor set is his final destination armor. So he does a sword swap and an armor swap at the exact same time. You can open it in combat if you use slash pet, then go to your wardrobe and go to your Y set. So what you want to do is switch to your Y set, close this wardrobe and then instantly sword swap and use your ability. Just like this. Did you catch it? Let's see that in slow motion. So you click, you close the wardrobe, you switch to your weapon and you use your ability. This is a sword swap and armor swap at the exact same time. Keep the intelligence of the first armor set, but you get the ability bonus of wise armor, granting your two third ability cost. Now let's look at the stuff that we cannot see. First of all, he is an absolute chad. He has enchanting 60 and alchemy 50, both of the skills that give you extra intelligence. This means that he has max base intelligence of 218. He has all accessories recombobulated, reforged to bizarre and with intelligence enrichments. Now before this started, he ate a jerry candy for 100 intelligence, century cake for 5 extra intelligence and a bottle of jira for 100 as well. Not super healthy if you ask me. Now in the wither essence shop he has maxed out the forbidden intelligence as well and he has a beacon 5 for 25 extra intelligence. He owns a soul flow supercell for 600 overflow mana and to get some extra intelligence in real life as well he subscribed to simply sample on youtube. So you guys know what to do. Now the reason that he throws this enderpearl is to actually spawn those endermen to get into combat. 
Now he is regening mana as well thanks to his plasma flux and his espresso machine will give him an additional 100 intelligence because he is in combat. Now all of this gives him barely enough to spawn a tribe member which costs almost 7000 mana to spawn. I know right? Insane. Now this was filmed during the Jerry Mayor and Jerry gave you an increase to stats and also granted about 500 intelligence but it's also possible without Jerry. Now let's see what it can do against a tier 2. We can see that it's doing very well and that Bayo is completely AFK. He is using the Creeper Veil ability making sure that he takes no damage at all. Now this is a tricky part. You can see that he throws a beacon and that Bayo will not move. And actually, the Creeper Veil is strong enough to absorb all of this damage. He has a Plasma Flux with him, so he regens mana, and he is still wearing his final destination armor. Now against the tier 3 we can already see a couple of issues. The tribe member moves very slowly, but it does a correct amount of damage. As you can see, it just took away 10 million health in a matter of seconds. But this is only when it crits. All in all, it is pretty slow. So especially the hit phase and moving towards the Seraph, if it teleports, will be very slow and that will result in you taking a lot of damage. Apart from the beacons, there's also the flying heads that deal a lot of damage, so I'd say this is more semi-AFK. But there's another way to truly AFK them, and that's using Admin Soul. For example, didn't you say that Admin Souls are like not good enough and they're like not good? Yes, I did, but I was talking about regular admin souls, like these ones. There's also a high pixel soul, and he's more than just an admin, he's actually the owner. With a base damage of 750,000, it rivals the tribe member. And I didn't talk about this before, because I thought it was not spawnable outside of dungeon, but now it is. Using this method, you can actually spawn one of the admin souls from my ghost vid, as well as Hypixel at the same time. Now, there's a spot at the top of the new Void Gloom area, where you can just chill and hide. And he is up there right now. As you can see, the mobs do even more damage than the tribe member does, and they hit a lot more often. This is very noticeable in the hit phase, and they do 1 million DPS. Let's take a look at this hit phase, and you can see that it's over insanely quickly. Now this is not the hard part of the fight, because remember, it's a tier 3, so not only are there beacons that are not a problem for the creeper veil ability, there's also floating heads. And there is the first head, now let's see how many heads he can take and if it's possible to completely AFK. The second one is already there and he only has 10 million HP left, so it should be all good, but there's a beacon as well. Even in full wise armor he can easily absorb this damage and eventually the tier 3 dies, completely AFK. Using this method, he AFK'd a tier 3 Void Gloom in just 1 minute and 30 seconds. That is pretty insane, right? I know you guys thought that necromancy wasn't worth anything. Now we are looking for more ways to get even more intelligence and spawn stronger souls. There is for example a Master Mode Golem Soul that has a DPS of 2 million. There's a bunch of stuff we haven't tried out, like Legion, Bad Person Armor and more. Now what I'm going to try to do is get a good setup as well and see what other parts in the game can be broken using the Hypixel Soul. I will put up my first ever contraband, this one paper on my auction house for 2 days. So if you want to support me or help me out by giving a small donation, go to my AH and leave some money. Now if you don't, that's all fine, but I did hope you enjoyed this video and that your brain has become a bit larger. Certainly, don't forget to subscribe.